Dear guests, greetings from the press room of the EU delegation in Washington, where, for obvious reasons, only a few of our participants will be joining me this year. Welcome to all of you uh, who are following this event virtually from Europe, uh, from the United States and beyond. This weekend, uh, we joined the American people in celebrating the birth of this nation and our shared ideals of freedom and democracy. Today and tomorrow, we will be reaffirming our shared values and interests through a range of discussions at this year's EU Defense Washington Forum. It is my great honor to be launching this forum together with General John Allen, president of the Brookings Institution, who has had a distinguished military career and is a great friend of Europe. This forum will touch upon the consequences of COVID-19 on transatlantic defense policy, defense capabilities, operational deployments and EU-NATO cooperation. We have seen how the emergence of a new virus can quickly lead to a global pandemic, generate a terrible death toll, and severely disrupt the world economy and our way of life. Security challenges have become even more urgent, complex, and global. They have been exacerbated by the risks of increased poverty and human suffering, while world leaders understandably focus on fighting the pandemic. But it is more important than ever that we work together to address these security challenges that have not gone away, old and new ones. We Europeans understand the need to take more responsibility for our own security, including by increasing our defense spending and improving our capabilities. The EU budget is also making an important contribution to this goal. We want to expand our role as a security provider and as a strong partner for the United States and other key allies while strengthening the European pillar of NATO. Our operations and missions support military training, counter piracy, and UN arms embargo enforcement around the world. Examples include the recently launched Operation Irini and the EU training mission in Mali. I am really pleased that the new commander of EUTM Mali will speak at the forum later today. Europe is addressing security concerns related to 5G and the technological challenges posed by China, including through investment screening and enhanced 5G security protocols. And we are also boosting our response to disinformation and cyber threats. But some other security threats, dear friends, not perhaps as obvious at first glance, are equally pressing and important to address now. Contact tracing apps, health apps, they're all fundamentally important for our ability to open up our economies and our societies. But if mishandled, if used for wrong purposes, they could bring surveillance in our societies that we have seen never before. It is extremely important to understand that in a democracy, it is citizens who are supposed to be observing and judging the actions and the thoughts of the governments every day, not governments who are supposed to be observing and judging the thoughts and actions of the citizens. If we go there, we have flipped democracy on its head. So it is extremely important we work together to ensure that we set the right standards, human-centric, human rights-based, democracy-based for artificial intelligence in the decades to come. Now, also, dear friends, while this forum focuses on defense, we know that security includes much more than defense spending and military capabilities. It is also about building resilience, safe communications, protection of critical infrastructure, and working for stability in a neighborhood. Security and development, in fact, go hand in hand. You cannot have one without the other. The EU and its member states are collectively the largest provider of development assistance in the world today. Through its Team Europe program, the EU will invest more than 35 billion euros to help vulnerable communities around the world and countries address COVID-19. Recently, we took initiatives to support countries around Venezuela with a huge flood of refugees coming out of that country at a time where the health systems and social systems are being stretched by COVID-19. These are examples of the leadership we should be taking around the world to bring stability, which is a prerequisite for defense and security. Now, crisis response, climate adaptation and mitigation economic opportunities, respect for human rights, development, and humanitarian assistance, 
all have an important role to play in enhancing stability and security that is sustainable. And as we celebrate the 75th anniversary of the UN Charter and the 70th anniversary of the EU itself, let me just say that the EU remains a fierce defender of diplomatically negotiated solutions to conflicts and a rules-based international order. Dear friends, to address these issues, we have brought together an impressive lineup of speakers and experts from both sides of the Atlantic. I'm grateful to all for their participation. Over the course of the next two and a half days, you will hear from three European ministers of defense, the EU's high representative, Jose Borrell, senior leaders from the US Department of Defense, the Department of State, the US Congress, EU institutions, NATO, and EU member states. You will also hear from some of the best transatlantic security experts outside of government who play such an important role in upholding a unique partnership. So stay with us. Finally, I want to thank the Brookings Institution, in particular, General Allen, Tom Wright, Filippos Letzas, and everyone involved for partnering with my team on this flagship transatlantic event on security and defense. So, dear friends, with these opening words, let me now pass the floor to John. Thank you very much.